Hey everyone, um, I am at Shiny Shabby, which opened a few days back, and I thought today would be a good time to talk really quick about the new Jelly Dolls functionality and the quick graphics settings that you can set and save in the viewer. Uh, these are some features that came out, I guess, a month or so back, maybe two months now, in the Linden Lab Viewer, and were released about a week ago in Firestorm which means that a lot more people are starting to see them now. And so I'm in Firestorm today to sort of demonstrate this feature and talk a little bit about it and why I actually think it's a pretty nice feature. Um, I've been using it on the Linden Lab Viewer for quite a while and, um, and so I thought uh, today would be just a good chance to talk about it a little bit more. And uh, uh, show you how it works. So um, I'm at Shiny Shabby, like I said, and there's lots of people around, and you'll notice that all of them are not rendered. They're showing up as these different colored green, and I'm not sure what color that is, and red and blue, uh, these different colors of what are known as jelly dolls. And the basic idea is that you can tell your viewer what level of complexity an avatar has to have less than in order for it to be re uh, rendered in your view by default. Uh, now, you can save lots of different settings for different places that you're gonna go. So I'm currently in what I call my events mode. And in my saved events settings, I have the complexity set quite low. So anybody who's less than, I think, 29,000 gets rendered, and anyone who's above 29,000, which is a really, really low number, um, does not get rendered. The effect is that I will f experience less lag and less issues, um, hopefully less crashes even, when I'm at events. So um, let's take a look at some of the things about these features and how they work and talk a little bit about the numbers and what they mean. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around that and, um, and just give you kind of a sense for how uh, you can use this tool because like I said, I think this is I think this is a good feature I think this is something that will help people especially on older hardware, but really Second life can be hard on any machine even if you have a really good machine And so sometimes you just want to not render as much stuff and this is a great easy fast way to do that when it comes to avatars uh, So a couple things that I want to point out so like I said you can choose what level of avatar complexity you want to not render people at. And this is something that's inside of your preferences panel. So I'm gonna press Control P to open this up. And it's on the graphics tab. And it's right here, maximum complexity. So I have mine set to 29,979, okay? Notice that for the people who are not rendered, it tells me above their head what their complexity currently is at. So this avatar here is only at a complexity of 42,000, which is actually very, very good as well. And I can actually increase the slider, get it above, oh, she's changed a little bit, get it above her there, and I'm going to choose OK, and notice that she is rendering now. So I can see what she's wearing. And I can come back into here, and I can go ahead and set this back down to my 29,000 number, uh, like that, and she'll go back to being a jelly doll. Okay, so what you set that at determines how much or how little complex items, uh, avatars you're going to see. Now let's say I have my setting at 29,000 and I don't want to change it, but I'm really curious about what she's wearing. Okay? You can come into any avatar at any time and right click on them. And you have three choices here. Render normally, and render normally means take your avatar complexity settings and render them according to that. Do not render. So let's say that you have maybe a really high setting, but you don't want to see somebody for whatever reason. Oh, there's my warning. Uh, you don't want to see somebody for a reason. You can tell them not to render at all. Or you can say, render fully. Ignore the fact that they're above my settings and just go ahead and render them. Or I can say, nope, don't render them. Make them jelly doll. Or I can say, nope, just render them normally. So there's three settings that you can do, and you can do those on the fly. So if you're really curious what somebody's wearing, let's say I'm really curious what she's wearing, I can just come down here and say, render fully, and there she is. I can see her. And I haven't had to change my settings or do anything with that. I can just set her back now to render normally. All right, so um, it, that's pretty easy to work with. Um, and it makes the tool um, 
uh, I think pretty nice uh, to work with on a uh, day-to-day -day basis. Now, let's talk about ourselves for a second. So notice that my avatar is fully rendering. I'm wearing lots of demo stuff now because I was shopping. Um, but if you want to know what your avatar complexity is, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, the first is you're going to get a prompt when you add and remove things from your body. So if I go ahead and take off my hair here quick, and notice up here in the upper right hand corner it tells me my avatar complexity is now 32944. And let me go ahead and put this demo back on. And it's going to come back and tell me now my avatar is 37129. So this is kind of nice from a shopping standpoint because it's very fast and easy to figure out uh, how much uh, of an avatar rendering cost a particular item I want to buy has. Um, if you don't want to take stuff off and you're just curious what it is, Firestorm has added under Avatar, Avatar Health, uh, the show avatar complexity information. And this will show it above everyone's head. And uh, you can see up there on mine that it's 37,129 complexity. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% certain what the different ranks are. I think that, um, um, that there's a point in them, but I'm not 100% certain what it is. But this person over here is a rank two complexity. I think she is rank two complexity as well. And I'm not 100% uh, sure what those ranks are for Firestorm, since I don't usually use Firestorm as a viewer. And that I don't think is part of the Linden Labs. But anyway, if you want to know what your complexity is, there's your number. Now let's talk about the numbers. Uh, in the Linden Lab viewer, uh, the setting for sort of being too complex uh, I believe it's set at 80,000, uh, which is uh, an okay number. Uh, it might be a little bit low. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about how the numbers are generated. Um, designers can do certain things when they upload their meshes, uh, for example, to uh, affect those numbers in ways that may or may not really truly affect how things are rendered in the world. But this is what we have for now. Um, if you're thinking about your avatars, I, I think you want to be thinking about a number that's between zero and maybe 150 um, avatar rendering cost. I, I think those are pretty safe numbers, in my personal opinion. Uh, if you're in within those, uh, you know, probably in that you know, 50 to maybe 150 thousand range, uh, you're, you're doing pretty good. Uh, once you get up to around 200, I think you're starting to get overly complex and starting to cause issues and i think uh, the people that you see and there's not a lot of them but you see people who have 200 plus avatar rendering costs i think those are the ones who are, are starting to potentially cause lag but again we don't really know because of um we you know the numbers are a little bit uh you know, complex. Uh, here's an interesting message that just popped up. It says, my avatar complexity is 37,129. You may not be fully rendered by everyone around you. So somebody using Firestorm is nearby me and has it set to something that won't render me. Uh, so that's kind of a nice message to let you know how many people are not seeing you. Uh, the numbers, though, you kind of have to play with them. I, you know, a lot of people have said, well, with a mesh body and a mesh head and this, that, and the other thing and mesh clothing, it's just too hard to get to quote unquote a reasonable number. Uh, but I'm wearing a full mesh outfit, mesh boots, the Lara body, um, a catwa head, mesh hair, uh, mesh necklace, mesh earrings. I'm 100% wearing mesh right now. Uh, and like I said, my avatar complexity is around, what is it, 37,000. So it's very easy to get even under that 80,000 limit that Linen Lab sets. Um, the two things that I found really, really, that I sort of see people wear every day that really, really affect avatar rendering cost are hair and jewelry. Uh, and depending on how well those are constructed and uploaded, those things can really, really skyrocket your, uh, your, your avatar complexity number. Um, I've seen hair that's 70 or 80,000 alone. I've seen jewelry, even bracelets and earrings that are similarly sized. And, um, and so it's, it's a kind of a trial and error sort of thing. Um, uh, and you kind of get used to, you know, seeing those, those numbers pop up and seeing those warnings pop up. And there is a way if you use Firestorm to turn off a lot of these pop ups. I'm not 100% certain what it is, but you can always ask in the Firestorm support group uh, if you're interested. Okay, so <clears throat> that's sort of the, the overview of the avatar complexity. And I think it's a great feature. I think it makes, uh, for those of us who have always de-rendered people when we went to events, this sort of solves that issue. 
uh, because we can, rather than de-render them, we can actually uh, just make them into jelly dolls and reduce things around. It doesn't get rid of all the lag at events, but I think it makes a big difference. I think it, it really helps. I mean, uh, Shiny Shabby is generally pretty busy. Uh, it's a pretty complex event to begin with, and there's usually a lot of people around. And so not rendering these people, I think, seems to really make a difference to me in my ability to walk around. Um, you know, I will mention my computer is fairly, fairly high end. Um, you know, I, I have a very good graphics card. I have a lot of RAM. And so I, I'm probably not the one that runs into issues more often or most often to begin with, but um, but I, I do think it helps. Um, and just kind of looking around at some of these numbers here, 100,000, 126,000, here's a 129, a 55. So the numbers, you know, are all over the place. There's a 139, et cetera. Now, that's a cool feature, but I don't think it's the coolest feature that Linden Lab introduced with this bundle of functionality. The coolest feature is the ability to save graphics preferences and switch between them on the fly uh, based on your needs. And so if you come up in Firestorm, and it's the same thing in the Linden Lab here, there's this little, I guess, a te monitor or television icon, I guess it's a computer monitor. And in here, you can basically save different settings. So there's the default graphics presets from a Firestorm. I have this one here called Events, which is what I'm on right now. And I can come in here, and I have one called Photography, and Photography basically sets everything super duper high, adds on my shadows, and you can see that pretty much nobody's going to be a jelly doll now, my computer's about to go crazy. Um, there's that. And then I have another one here called Walking Around, No Shadows. This one has a higher um, a setting for who gets jelly dolled, so it's not quite as low as my event. So you can see these people here, he's now rendering, she's still not. Um, um, these people are here are not rendering, okay. Um, and then I have one for walking around that includes shadows. And so different things that I, I can do. So I'm gonna switch back to events while I'm here. But you can save these settings and switch between them like I just showed you on the fly, which means now you can have all sorts of different settings set up for any different um, need that you have. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna go ahead and click Open Graphics Preferences. And that's gonna bring me into here. And what I can do is I can set these to whatever I want. I want, let's see, uh, let's say I want to create one that's for um, less busy events, okay? So I'm going to um, go ahead and turn on advanced lighting model, and I'm going to boost up my avatar complexity to, let's say, 60,000-ish, something like that. And I'm going to leave the overall graphics quality at medium. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I think that's probably good. Uh, I don't need an ambient inclusion on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save all of this. And I'm going to go ahead and say save. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to call this light events. Uh, for places, you know, that maybe have been open for a while um, or just don't attract the same number of people as my normal event. So I'll go and click save and click OK. Actually, let me go ahead and open this back up here. So, and come back up here now. So I've got my light events. If I go ahead and click on events, notice it changes my maximum complexity to 29. It's turned off advanced lighting model. If I come up here to light events, advanced lighting model's back on. My complexity is back up to 60. Uh, I don't know if there's a maximum number of these you can save. At some point, there's not really many more graphic settings you can choose. But this is a great way to switch very quickly on the fly between different complexity settings and different overall settings on your computer. It makes it really, really easy um, to, um, you know, to, to change these things. And things that are in the debug settings, like the render um, volume LOD setting that a lot of people will change. Uh, that, if you change it in your debug settings and save a graphic settings, that will get saved along with it. So really, it is pretty much anything that can get saved, um, which is which is pretty nice. I think it's a great feature, uh, and it's a great addition uh, along with the complexity settings. 
So I'm going to go back over here towards Apple May, which is where I was, and this outfit I'm wearing here, the hair is from Entwined. Um, and I actually already did buy this. Um, I got the their Naturals pack, which is, I think, six sort of default colors. And then this pair of shorts and top is from Apple May at Shiny Shabby, and it seems to fit pretty good, so I'll probably get this as well. Uh, and my boots are from the Fetish Fair from KC Couture, um, which just tends to get all of my money when it comes to shoes. Uh, Anyway, so I, I hope this is inf uh, this information is useful to you. I know for sure that the Linden Lab viewer and Firestorm have this setting now. Um, I believe a couple other viewers do, um, but more will in time, uh, as this is a default feature. And I think I, I think this is good work done by Linden Lab. Uh, they need to I. Um, do a little more work to make the avatar rendering cost information I think more um, accessible to designers what what influences and how it works and I think they need to think about changing that over time so that um, uh, that it, it reflects um, how, how things are actually rendering accurately um, but uh, again, overall, I think it's, it's it's really nice and it works really well and it's quite simple and straightforward to use. Um, it's disconcerting to people when they don't see people rendering, but uh, like I said, it's really fast and easy to get people to render in your view. So she's rendered now because I'm on my light events. I might go back to events and she's going away. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful and uh, it's not really wardrobe related or inventory related, but um, it is shopping related and that's how we fill up our wardrobe. So uh, if you have questions about it, leave them in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find these useful. Um, and of course you can always just get with me in world if you have questions about how this stuff works. Um, and I'm happy to chat with anyone about it and uh, and help you learn. So until next time, thank you.